Can you imagine the Wizard of Oz without Over the Rainbow? Well, it almost happened. When we come back, we'll have the incredible story of the movie classic that almost wasn't. It's part of our special behind-the-scenes look at the Wizard of Oz. It's hard to believe one of the most popular and beloved songs in movie history was originally cut from the Wizard of Oz, but it's true. Studio executives thought the song slowed down the film and were dead set against one of their glamorous stars actually singing in a barnyard. This was the golden age of Hollywood after all. And even though movie stars held the imagination of the world, the studios had total control. After much debate, the song was put back in. And a billion people for over 50 years have gotten the chance to fly over the rainbow with a legendary Judy Garland. Flying houses, fiery witches. The special effects in The Wizard of Oz were state-of-the-art. When we come back, we'll show you how Hollywood worked its magic decades before high-tech computer animation. Prepare to be dazzled by hard work and pure imagination. Chair was dropped from the ceiling of the soundstage onto a floor painted to look like the Kansas sky. It was all filmed in slow-mo, then run in reverse. Voila! a flying house. Some effects were a little harder to come by and a lot more dangerous. Take it from Margaret Hamilton, who plays the witch. And she pulls around and stands on, on this little elevator that went down slowly or went down fast. In this case, it dropped out from under me, and we ran to the uh, first aid station. But I had a second degree on my face and third on my hand. Classic Hollywood special effects at their finest. Another reason we still love the Wizard of Oz. Ray Bolger danced his way into the hearts of moviegoers around the world as the Scarecrow, even though his most challenging routine didn't even make it into the Wizard of Oz. But that doesn't mean you can't see it. Next, we'll go behind the scenes for a rarely seen Busby Berkeley dance number that was bounced from the film at the last minute. Ray Bolger was a wiry song and dance man when he signed to do The Wizard of Oz, and he wasn't even supposed to play the Scarecrow. But let's let him tell the story. I loved the thought of being the Scarecrow, and I could not imagine anybody else playing the part. And I could do all the kinds of steps that I wanted to do, and it was something else. I don't know, I had a feeling if I could play this part, it would make a star out of me. And then I got my wife and I went up to Mr. Mayor's office, and we fought and fought and fought, and I finally won out. After convincing the studio chief, he got the part he wanted, and the chance to work with a great Busby Berkeley on this rarely seen dance sequence that incredibly was cut from the movie. Here it is. that nobody else could have played the part like Ray Bolger, the one and only Scarecrow. I would dance and be merry, life would be a ding a dairy if I only had a brain. Jack Haley made his mark as the Tin Man, but he wasn't the first choice for the role. Recognize this face? When we come back, we'll show you who the studio wanted and how a freak accident cost this poor mountaineer a trip to Oz. So who was supposed to be the Tin Man? Would you believe Jed Clampett? Well, Buddy Epson, actually, who later went on to star in the Beverly Hillbillies and Barnaby Jones. Originally, he had the part, but aluminum dust from his makeup, of all things, nearly choked him to death. Though we know Buddy survived, he couldn't go on. Enter Jack Haley with a new, non-toxic makeup. To prepare for his role as the Tin Man, Haley turned to a powerful source. I said, well, I have a son, four or five years old. And when I go home at night, he insists that I come up and tell him a story. My thinking is to have that same approach in the character. He said, well, give me an example. Well, a long time ago, I was standing here, and it started to rain. And that's how Jack Haley struck gold, Hollywood gold, staying forever in our hearts as the Tin Man. How do you direct munchkins, wizards, 
witches, and Toto, too. When we return, how several different directors put their mark on The Wizard of Oz, and how Clark Gable figures in this incredible Hollywood tale. How many different directors worked on The Wizard of Oz? Five total, including George Cukor, who changed Dorothy from a glamorous blonde to the simple farm girl audiences fell in love with. And then there was Victor Fleming, who received screen credit. He did most of the directing, but just before filming was completed, his friend Clark Gable asked him to step in on the troubled set of Gone with the Wind. That left the last few memorable weeks to another legend of the time. King Vidor. Victor Fleming was a good friend and took me around all the sets and went through the thing. And one day he left and I took over. It was about, as I remember, it was about two and a half weeks, three weeks possibly, <clears throat> which included the Somewhere Over the Rainbow. But I did not want any credit, and as long as Victor was alive, I even kept quiet about it. So too many cooks may spoil the broth, but too many directors. Not necessarily. They dance. They sing. They even dive through windows. But it wasn't as effortless as it looked for the Scarecrow, Tin Man, and Cowardly Lion. When we come back, how they made it look easy despite costumes and makeup nightmares. Games. Now let's go behind the scenes and under the costumes. Judy Garland remembers. I had to work with three very professional men, you know, Jack Haley and Bert Lauer and Ray Bolger. And they had so much makeup on. And they were so busy complaining about their makeups. And each one was making bets as to which makeup was the most difficult all the way through the picture. Ray Bolger's scarecrow makeup and mask were so heavy it nearly suffocated him. I had a rubber mask. And the only unfortunate thing about it was that it sort of closed the pores in my face. And when the lights got real hot and they uh, ate up all the oxygen, I couldn't breathe. Jack Haley's Tin Man costume was so clunky, he literally had to sleep standing up. So I had to be on what they call a reclining board. And I would go to sleep as soon as I got on a reclining board. And Bert Lars' lion costume weighed over 90 pounds, quite a load for the skinny actor to carry. Bert Lauer, he was always undoing the buttons. He always had gas on his stomach. He couldn't eat anything. Ray Bolger, Jack Haley, and Bert Lauer. They made the impossible look easy and fun with a lot of brains, heart, and courage. People everywhere have enjoyed The Wizard of Oz for nearly half a century. And they've been scared by things like... Lions! And tigers! And bears! Oh, my! But there's a song and dance number from the haunted forest few have ever laid eyes on. Coming up next, we'll show you the lost scene that'll really spook you. All right, it's time to head back to the haunted forest for a song and dance routine few people have ever seen. It's a jumpin' number that was cut from the film and the footage lost forever. But now, thanks to composer Harold Arlen's home movies and the original soundtrack, we've been able to piece it together. Look out! Here comes the jitterbug. The jitterbug. Oh, the bats and the bees and the breeze and the trees have a terrible, horrible buzz. Oh, and the bees and the breeze and the trees couldn't do what the jitterbug does. So be careful of that rascal. Keep away from the jitterbug. Now, did you happen to notice the man behind the tree? He's one of the people who brought the haunted forest to life, proving once again, there's no place like Oz. You saw this versatile actor as Professor Marvel and the Wizard, but who else did he play? And who was originally supposed to be the all-powerful Oz? Well, the studio wanted W.C. Fields, but negotiations broke down over money. So, the role went to Hollywood veteran Frank Morgan, who, in addition to playing the great bumbling wizard... Oh, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain! ...threw in Professor Marvel... Please, Professor, why can't we go with you and see all the crown heads of Europe? Do you know any? The gatekeeper, the carriage driver, and the sentry for good measure. Talk about your working actors. Well, that's about it from the Land of Oz. We hope you enjoy this rare glimpse into the making of one of America's most enduring movie classics. We'll leave you with a little more magic from the Scarecrow, Tin Man, Cowardly Lion, and, of course, Dorothy. The one thing that we will be known for, no matter what we've done, any place else in the whole world, will be the Wizard of Oz. 
Well, we don't get any residuals, but we have a better thing than residuals. We have a kind of immortality and, and, and a great pride of being a part of a great American classic. The wonderful Wizard of Oz.